Welcome to the town board meeting for Thursday, March 18th. Uh, roll, please. Supervisor Prodi? Here. Council Persons Doyle? Here. Gutierrez? Here. Morris? Absent until we see if he's attending. Well, there was an extra person I didn't recognize, so we'll see if that's Jim. There he is. Let's give him a second. Can you hear us, Jim? I think he should be able to hear us soon. It says connected. Jim, are you present? I'm here. Yay! <laughs> Council, <laughs> Councilwoman Smokey? Present. Members are present. Hey, we have uh, Don Andrews with us tonight to um, go over the cost estimate for the Laval Road pump house. John, do you want to um, go ahead and start? Certainly. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is John Andrews. I'm a New York State licensed professional engineer. I'm a principal of the firm of Rody Soika and Andrews. Um, and I've served as engineer to the planning board and certain town matters for uh, a number of years in Amenia. This is the first time I've had the pleasure of, of working on a water district issue. Um, if you may recall, we were asked to do a, a quick evaluation of the Lavelle Road pump station. It's a uh, small pumping station located at the end of Lavelle, Lavelle Road. It's kind of in the middle of your water system. And <laughs> For lack of a better word, it's a little wood frame building, about eight by 10. It contains controls and other things for two wells that are located on the town property surrounding it. And after doing an evaluation of the property, it became evident that there are some issues uh, with the structure, with the, uh, the components inside. And it's, it's really uh, a function of um, the building's not ready to fall down but it probably is not the stablest of structures. But it, the area at Lavelle Road, and I'm sure you're all familiar with it, is very low and wet and quite mm -hmm. damp. And the building itself is small. It contains a chlorination system as well as actually physically one well, plus all the controls for the, the two wells that are down there. So as a consequence, there's a, there's a high degree of moisture and a high degree of um, corrosion induced by the chlorination system. So even though the building, the, the operator's done a fairly credible job of keeping it together, um, one would say with chewing gum and bailing wire, but it but it's together and it's it's pretty stable, it, it, it's functional. Um, he's done a pretty good job of maintaining the equipment inside, but there's only so much he can do. And um, water pumping stations, water booster stations, especially ones associated with chlorine, you end up with a, a great deal of moisture inside and chlorine itself is corrosive. And so with all the small electrical contacts and, and, and um, equipment that's inside the structure, they're highly uh, vulnerable to corrosion. And it doesn't take much when you have some of these small contacts to get some corrosion and something goes haywire. Um, it does have a generator. The generator is probably a little old. Um, the, the operator tells me it's operating fine. But the, the long and short of it is, even though it's not in immediate danger, it sh you should plan to do something with this station. And the original concept was um, the supervisor asked, what would it cost to replace it? Um, so what we did is we took a look at, at, at replacement and uh, basically what we considered is replacing the station uh, in kind with certain other improvements that would be necessary or warranted because of where it is in the system. Um, the first thing that would have to happen is it, it, it's a building that would actually need a minimum of two separate rooms inside the building. One to keep the electrical components and the water components away from the chlorine components. So you've got to make the building bigger and put two rooms in it. Um, the existing small pump house, as small as it is, actually has one well physically located inside that room. 
that's not the star standard way of doing it. You can't pull any equipment out of the well. You actually have to pull a hatch off the roof in the existing building to pull the well. Not the best of situations. So what you would do is construct another building, put the well outside, create a situation where it would be an external well where you could work on it, where you could do what you had to do. Um, make some other improvements. Um, the wells need some blow-offs, um, so on and so forth. Where it's located in the system, it's it's kind of in the middle of your system. So it, the water comes out of this well house and kind of splits two ways. It goes one way down um, Lavelle Road. The first customers are somewhere around the church and the school, and then it goes across the rail trail and up up, up to the tank. And I, and I don't know the exact routing because I'm, I'm not that familiar yet with the system. But because of the close proximity of the, the first customer, there's a standard um, It typically requires that water leaving the, the well production area be properly treated. In other words, chlorinated. It is chlorinated, but in order to get um, and, and perform its necessary task, there's a duration that the chlorine must be in contact with the water before it reaches the first customer. You currently don't have that. It's, it's, so in order to do that, what you would do is need to put a chlorine contact tank in, which is nothing more than, than a big wideness in the pipe. The water gets pumped in, water goes through it, but it spends enough time in there to get properly chlor chlorinated, give the chlorine proper time to kill all the germs, um, and then reach your first customer. So, and the last thing is a lot of the piping around there, this was kind of, and I, and I don't know anything about your system, but this is kind of one of those middle units where all the piping may not be properly sized and we may, may be prudent to upsize some of the piping. Well, piping is the two inch is not bad, but when you put everything together, you might get better flow characteristics and better performance by going from, I think there's a two inch that goes to a four inch that goes to an eight inch, might be better going from six inch all the way and, and benefiting from it. Having said all that, there are there, there are certain limitations. I didn't do an evaluation of your system completely. And in talking to your operator, um, I, I must caution you, I did put a section in there regarding potential alternatives. Um, and that may be the replacement of the Lavelle Road pump station is not in the overall best interest of the system as a whole. And it might be more prudent to take a look at your overall system. And when you look at the amount of money that you want to spend, it might be more prudent to look other places where you might get better bang for your buck, if you will, and you might end up with a better improvement uh, than replacement of the station. And, you know, in the final analysis, looking at the station, no matter what you do, it's always going to be in the wetlands. It's always going to be across the street from, from an open water pond. There's always going to be inherent issues with it. So having said all that, um, brings you around to what's the bottom line? Well, what we did is we did a, a construction cost estimate and what that construction cost estimate would be, it would be replacement of the existing pump house with a properly sized house. Uh, preliminary estimates say it needs to be about 15 by 15. Um, we recommended precast <coughs> concrete stands up better under the, the conditions. Um, we recommended a chlorine contact tank. Um, and and you can't you can't pluck the Lavelle Road station offline and just replace it. You have to keep that running. So you got to kind of build this whole new station and then gradually switch over, switch one from the other, so you don't impact your system. So um, there's that cost in there. There's the necessary improvements to the existing well that need to be made to make it a, a an exterior well. And then of course there's always demolition and removals. And, and the issue when you are replacing while keeping one running is you need new electric service. You need to duplicate a whole bunch of stuff before you even start to knock down the new building. So the, the bottom line is breaking down construction. Um, we broke down the various elements, site construction, precast concrete pump house, electrical construction, chlorine contact tank, the wellhead improvements, demolition and removal.
The subtotals for all that come to about $205,000. We built in a 15% contingency. 15% is typically high, but at this early stage in a concept, you'd rather go high than low. Um, the closer you get, the next cost estimate that probably should go down to 10% contingency. And then before the final bid, it usually goes down to between two and 4%. So yeah, the contingency, you come up with a total estimated construction cost of $236,670. Seems like, okay, that's one, that's the element. However, when it comes to a station like this, there are a number of additive percentages that have to be built into this to properly cover the entire cost. Typically, you're going to have engineering design, your approvals. In this case, we're going to need an updated survey. We're going to need updated wetland delineation and permitting. That's going to be about 20%. That's a general rule of thumb at this level. You're going to have legal and other administrative costs. The town attorney uh, doesn't come cheap, um, and, and no disrespect to Ian, but you have to figure that in. You have an existing operator. He needs to keep the existing station running. He needs to assist us in the design of the new station because, frankly, when things break loose in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve, they're not calling your engineer. They're calling your operator. So he needs to be in, involved in the design of the system. And then lastly, even after you get everything designed, bid, ready to go, you're going to need construction phase engineering. You're going to need construction phase operator assistance. So having said all that, there's a whole bunch of percentages that get added on top of that basic construction cost. And when you break it all down, adding the necessary costs, total estimated construction costs, as I said, was 236000 The engineering design approvals wetland, that adds about 35000 Legal and administrative adds another almost 12,000. Your operator assistance is almost 12,000 as well. And then the construction phase engineering and operator assistance, that's kind of two components added together. Um, that ends up being about the highest additive. That's about 40,000. So the net project, if you sum it all together, is $336,000 for the replacement of that minor eight by 10 building. Now, is that conservative? Yes. Is it probably on the high side? I would suggest it is. Is it overly high? I would suggest not. Um, I think there's a lot of issues with it. Some of you may have been on the board for a while. I think there are some neighbors that have some concerns around our, our wetland watchers. So there's a lot of things that have to go into this. But um, to simply replace that building is going to be somewhere in the vicinity of $336,000, no matter how you cut it. But so would it be better to look for another place to put it? Well, it, it, the alternatives, and, and I spoke with your operator, there seems to be, um, there's a couple other issues you have to kind of factor in the back of your, your head, if you will. The, the location of this house is near wetlands. Um, there's a an issue that that is going around. It's called groundwater groundwater under the direct influence of surface water. So whenever you have a production source, in this case a groundwater well, um, located in close proximity to wetlands and or a surface water body, there exists the potential for that water body to directly influence the well. Um, that creates other issues. And rather than going for treatment from simple chlorination that you do now, it gets very, it can get very complicated if it is found to be under direct influence. Um, you need to add filtration and other things. So I'm, I'm, I'm going in a roundabout way to say that perhaps you ought to look at other avenues for an expenditure of this amount of money before you, you embark on this. The is that perhaps, that, or is that your recommendation? Um, I would, I would do some research before we do this, sir. Yes. My recommendation to you would be to, so to, to sit down and, and come up with the alternatives. In this case, what we're really talking about is you have two production wells located in close proximity 
to this house on that piece of property you own at the end of Lavelle, Lavelle Road. One of the wells has some issues, has to be flushed from time to time, as I understand it, because it generates silt. The other one, eh, it, it's okay, but they're not big producers. They're, they're, they're under 50 gallons a minute a piece. Within the town of Amenia, and perhaps even within your existing well field, which the operator tells me is up closer to this tank, there may be some opportunities, and you might be able to drill two new wells, take those existing wells offline, and perhaps spend less than $336,000. So the, the, the answer is, I think what the board needs to do is take this under advisement, consider whether it's prudent, and perhaps authorize a little more detailed study to see what the options to simple replacement are. And I, I think that's a better expenditure of time and effort. That sounds reasonable to me. I, I, I think the initial study, and I, I haven't had any time to put a cost to it, but it's it's money that would go, um, it would money that would go to the next design piece, if you will. Um, so you're probably looking, um, this study, I think uh, I had given the number to, to Ian and I think was authorized with the board, it was about $3,500. Um, to really do a little more detailed evaluation of your water system, you may have already done one a couple of years ago. I, I seem to recall something on it, but but you're looking at probably uh, between three to five for your operator and probably five to 12 for an engineer to get you to the next step to, to, to you know, come up with viable alternatives. And, you know, it may lessen the other costs on the other end, the additives cost, because drilling wells is not, you spend for a hydrogeologist, you spend for well drillers, you spend for some studies but us engineers don't make as much as we do on a small project like this. So, um, but I, I think you're looking at another expenditure that's somewhere around $15,000 to get you to the next step, which I, I think would be prudent. And, I, and mm -hmm. I don't know what's available on your water system. I haven't seen any updated uh, reports or uh, other matters, but uh, just going by what your operator has to say, um, I think you'd be well advised to look carefully before you leaped and, and not assume that this is the correct course of action at this time. Okay. John, how far outside of the 100 year floodplain is the current pump house? Depending upon the elevations you take, it may not be at all. <laughs> The 100-year floodplain elevation in that point is some, I forget what the exact numbers are, I can tell you in a second, um, and, and they kind of end up on the property next door, but when you start to look at the, um, you start to look at the elevation of the pump house itself, um, normally you would try to set everything about two foot above the 100-year flood elevation. Uh, I would think this is probably set somewhere around um, eight to 14 inches above the, the 100 year flood elevation. So it, practically speaking, it's right there. Because um, I'm just looking at the map now, the, the, uh, the 100 year flood elevation is uh, elevation 542. I think the pump station itself, the data I've seen would suggest it's somewhere around 541 to 541.5. So you don't have a lot of latitude, sir. And even though the wetlands appear to be at some distance to it, when you walk around the pump station and you see how the rail trail is on one side, your piece of property is kind of small in between, then it goes over to the wetlands and the pond uh, across Lavelle Road. I would have to venture a guess that the wetlands probably come right up to about three or four feet outside the existing fence line. So there, there's wetlands impacts there as well. Didn't seem like a great place to build anything, but no, it does not. <laughs> I mean, it can be done, but that wouldn't be my first. If I was starting new, that wouldn't be my first choice. Well, the thing is, we really are starting new if we built a new facility. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you replace the facility, um, 
but I, I would suggest that the idea is to start new and not yes. and find an alternative. So I thought that we had actually um, put out an RFP or RF uh, request for qualifications for a wastewater um, or for a water evaluation, a capital improvement plan, and we actually had interviewed. Um, some different engineers, including including Ty and Bond, which had kind of a cheat sheet, and it did a thorough. Um, uh, they proposed to do a thorough analysis of all the uh, infrastructure issues that the water district faces in a um, non-emergency situation. But starting with it, like the water tower, we knew has issues. We know we have problems serving uh, Depot Hill. They have individual power boosters because they have low pressure there because they're high. The tank needs to be higher. There's um, old, old pipes. You found, you know, different size pipes just in your little analysis, John. But I think all throughout this system, we've got World War II uh, pipes. We've got a different, you know, PVC when you put a new patch in and it's just been patched and patched and patched. I think overall, the town needs to grapple with the overall needs of the water system and, and then dovetail what we know is a problem, thanks to your thorough investigation, in the wetlands. I would definitely follow your lead that is my suspicion is is that we're just going to look at um it's just not an ideal place to put infrastructure right in the middle of the wetland it's expensive the dec doesn't like it mm -hmm. um it's always going to be an impact every time we bring trucks and stuff in there and try to do repairs and i'm assuming that that's why there's such high corrosion with high humidity and even with the dehumidifier going regularly i mean What's the? It, 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 does the wetland contribute to the water moisture? I, I I can't give you a quantitative analysis. I can only tell you it it does because if you've been down there in the summertime between the, the mosquitoes and and the the dank air in there, it it all has an impact. And and you're right, they do have a dehumidifier, but even that suffers from from corrosion because it's not just the moisture. Remember, you've got the chlorine in there. And that the corrosive atmosphere created by chlorine uh, exacerbates any moisture condition. So you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, I, 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 I kind of joked with the, the your operator that if 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 you were starting a system from scratch, um, you wouldn't be putting the well house in the in this location. You just wouldn't. You might have put the water sources, but even that's a little iffy because of the the, the DEC involvement. They would prefer you not be in there, and then your casing needs to be a minimum of two foot. The top of casing needs to be a minimum of two foot above the hundred year flood elevation. There's all sorts of issues, so um, it's it's a complicated undertaking. But you have the opportunity now. The facility works. The operator's done a fairly good job. You do have some new equipment in there. You do have some some you know issues, but it's not an emergent. It, it, it it's not an urgent situation, but I think it I think it is because we've had several instances in the last few months where they've lost electricity there. And mainly the problem has been the corroded panel box. So I, I, I wouldn't doubt, you know, he's replaced it, but you're absolutely right, Supervisor. But I mean, the, the bottom line here is I, I think uh, Whoever said it is correct. You need to get an overall picture of where you need to spend your money first. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that that if you look at if you look at it, it's at its simplest level. This is a point where two wells of rather limited yield add to your system. <coughs> you've got a fairly good sized town. You've got a there might be other locations, including your existing well field where a couple more wells could supply what you need without too much difficulty. And that would probably be a, a lesser cost than this here. Well, at least by you doing the cost estimate, you know, you went in and took a good look at everything. 
to see uh, what we're up against in that area and, and we're gonna have to do something. So what, if you were to, um, or if an engineer was able to uh, suggest that two more wells could be located at our existing pump house, a pump, uh, main pump place up on um, Lincoln Court, I guess it's called, near the uh, water tank, then would we have all this duplication necessary? We could keep pumps four and five going while we uh, sink some additional ones without hiring all, you know, adding all this duplication, increasing the, I just don't see throwing good money, you know, into a situation that's going to continue to corrode over time. What, what you really need is, is, and I don't know whether you've done this or not, but yet, and I, I defer to, to, to you, you folks, but what you really need is to bring on a, a, a hydrogeologist, someone who understands wells and water production, um, evaluate your existing well field and determine the, 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 the potential yield from that. Um, again, that's not, it, it's not a big ticket item, but if you could drill a couple wells and, and replace the two that you got, you're right. You don't have to. You, you, they're, they're, they're just gravy. When they d fail, they fail. And we've got the other two guys online and it buys yeah. this time. It, that, that's correct. So, I mean, if my recommendation would be to, and I don't know whether you've ever had a hydrogeologist look at your well field, but get a hydrogeologist involved and um, go from there. Um, I think we have to belabor the point. I think that's the way to go. I agree. I think going into a thing and spending all that kind of money on wells that may not be productive at all and have all these problems, it's probably a very bad idea. So I think um, well, it's not, all it's your not, advice and go it's obviously not a good place to have a pump house. Say that again? I said it's obviously not a good place to have a pump house. That's right. Let alone put another one there. Correct. So uh, do you have any recommendations for hydro? I, I, I've it? typically worked with uh, Leggett, Brashears, and Graham. Um, okay. Uh, the, the only thing is I, I will be candid. They, they also served as the hydrogeologists to uh, Silo Ridge and did a pretty <coughs> thorough job. I, I just throw that out because I don't want anybody to, to think there's there's issues there. But um, I can certainly reach out to them and get a proposal to um, to get to you folks if you'd like, Supervisor. Does everybody think that's a good idea? Yes, I yes. do. I would, I would definitely go with his recommendation. And the fact is, if they've done drilling wells at Keene Stud, it's not that far to Lincoln Court. So they are probably already, already familiar with the capacity is there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I know they did the, the, the Silo Ridge water supply itself. So they do have an, they do have a familiarity with your town. So let me reach out to them. I'll see if I get a proposal directed to you and um, we can, we can revisit this next steps because as I, I see Ian nodding his head up in the corner, there's going to have to be a series of legal authorizations that, that accompany this so that everything is, is properly can be properly funded at the, the tail end of this. So I, I don't, it's going to, I hate to say it, but it has to kind of be a formal process. And, um, you know, so that, that at the end of the day, um, you behave as good stewards for the water district. And, and I, I just don't want to well, get crosswise with the attorney. Well, that's why, um, you know, I asked you to get involved and, you know, and just take a good look at it because I know there was some issues when we first put the pump house there um we, you know a long time ago but it's it's just uh cost the water district a lot of money having to keep doing all these repairs there and if i'm correct uh the three hundred thousand dollars isn't just isn't borne by the whole town it's borne by the 300 water district customers right. right i mean this is a very small group of people to shoulder that kind of Capital. Well, I think, yeah, well, I think starting with the 
hydro um, is a yeah. geologist. Yeah. Um, is a good first step um, for us to, you know, see what we've got and the best place to put wells and what to do moving forward. Um, I think we can all agree we certainly don't want to spend any kind of money building another building in the wetland um, based on the condition the current building is in from being there, you know, as long as it has. And just, you know, watch another building deteriorate the same way. So um, I, I think that's a good first step. Okay, I will, uh, I, I will do what I can. If I can, if I can get another name, I'll try to get more than one name uh, of a hydrogeologist and get get a couple proposals for you. And um, we'll go from there. Yeah, if we got, you know, at least three would be good. Okay, you, know, if you could get a couple other people. Yep. Can, I, can I suggest Russell Urban Mead? Um, yes, I was going to. He's very good, and he knows our town because he did the aquifer mapping. Yep. Thank you. And I think he's still with the Chasing Company, so I'll. I'll... Yeah, he's yep. still there. Okay, I'll talk to Russell. Not a problem. Well, thank you very much for your insight and all the work you've done on this. Um, well, I, I thank you for a... the opportunity. <laughs> Oh, well, you've been with the town a long time. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate your thoroughness. It's always a beautiful report that you put in. I see all of your T's and I's dotted, and I appreciate all that. Well, thank you. I, I, it's it's not, I, I, as I'm fond of saying, it's not my first rodeo. I've been working for towns for a lot of years, and right. um, there's a certain responsibility that, that, that I owe you and you owe your community. And if I don't do my job, you, you, you can't do your job exactly and that's uh that's kind of the way i've always done it so well thank you very much john we really appreciate your knowledge and your insight Yo, well, you're very welcome and um just give me a couple give me a week or so to, to see if i can round everybody up and then they'll have their own time frames this isn't going to happen tomorrow but but uh i i will start on it uh first thing next week okay thank you very much thank you all thank you have a great evening. And if you don't mind, I will I will leave now. <laughs> okay. Unless you got any further questions. <clears throat> nope. Thank you very much. Okay. Have you enjoy this rainy night? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good night for ducks. <laughs> <laughs>
develop plans and certainly I will reach out to you guys again as we get a better handle on those dollars and specifically where and what we can use them for as the county develops some plans. So, I mean, it's exciting news and hopefully we get some dollars out there, but um, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Also wanted to bring to your attention for your constituents that um, as of today, Dutchess County has partnered with the United Way of Orange and Dutchess and there's a hotline, 211 is the number, and it is um, getting necessary information, if you call that number, you get necessary information um, for uh, resources to avert eviction. It's a new eviction hotline. So that might be something that would help uh, people out there who are facing eviction and need some inf information and some resources. So 211 is the number you want to dial for that, and um, that will be good for you. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is COVID uh, vaccines, of course. Um, certainly, supply is still lacking behind demand. Demand is exceeding supply. Um, but as of, I think, tomorrow, um, the new vac mass vaccine site for the state is going to be at Ulster Fairgrounds in Ulster County and SUNY Orange is opening a mass vaccine site. So it'll be closer obviously than Westchester and Albany and there are appointments available. I can tell you that I was able to go on yesterday and make an appointment for one of my constituents in uh, at the Ulster County site for tomorrow. So um, be patient, hit refresh a lot and you can get a vaccine appointment at one of those places and they're more convenient um, location wise. But also if anybody needs help getting an appointment, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I've gotten some people appointments, uh, D as in dog, Houston at duchessny.gov or of course my cell phone number 845-797-9639. And I'm always willing to help get appointments for anybody that needs it. And if you're a veteran, of any age at this point, you can go to the walk-in clinic at Castle Point, and I'm just going to pull it up here, uh, Castle Point campus in Wappingers Falls, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 2.30, no appointment necessary. Any veteran of any age is able to go and get a vaccine there. They also have the Montrose campus open in Montrose, New York, but I'm just mentioning the Wappingers one just for um, location, but those are both open and available. And um, lastly, on uh, the COVID vaccine, the governor of New York opened up today. Pharmacies um, who are only able to serve people over 65, then people over 60, they are now starting, I believe tomorrow, able to give the vaccine to teachers, substitute teachers, and student teachers at pharmacies. So that will be <coughs> vaccine um, availability. Um, and I think that's what I have. And I'm happy to answer any questions if you guys have any questions for me. Deirdre, does the, uh, does the county legislature, have they been given, or have you guys discussed any uh, processes for vetting or scoring uh, or otherwise distributing that relief money that, that you guys are expecting? So no, we have not yet because we have not, this is all so new. I actually just got the report via email tonight. Uh, of the money is expected to the county and and what it can be used for. So we haven't had um, a means to go about that, but certainly at the next meeting, which will happen at the beginning of the month, that will be very close and uh, forefront of my agenda uh, to talk about. Uh, that's great. I mean, I'm sure you've heard uh, some of the recent ongoing efforts uh, to reorganize a wastewater system here um in amenia we've been doing a lot of work on it and uh it would be great to have some process in place at the county level to vet and score and really understand the needs because uh, i'm sure there's going to be a lot of people out there with their you know hands out for some money yes but. i know i already like you know pleasant valley's talking about water too so i know it's going to be an issue so um if you can share with me some information i'm happy to go over it and and then obviously have the knowledge when i go to to the county um about what it is specifically dollars if you want to just email me or uh, reach out to me offline i'm happy to go over the project with you just so i have all the information sure we can um actually we can invite you to the next wastewater committee uh meeting that would be excellent do you have one scheduled at this point Jim, offhand, I don't think there's one scheduled. Uh, okay. No, no, Jim. There isn't. 
There isn't. Yeah, okay. we'll we'll coordinate with the with the chair, and we'll get we'll reach out to you, Deidre. Thanks. Okay. And then, Damien, I'll reach out to you via email too, just to get some back information. So I have it for the beginning of the month. If that's okay with you. That's great. Okay. Anything else for me? I don't think anybody has any other questions. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You are very welcome. Happy to. And uh, giving us all the good information. Yeah. And if you need anything else, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to help out. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Stay guys. Safe and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, supervisor's report. Uh, Lavelle Road pump house and generator upgrade. The town board will be reviewing the town engineer report and looking into how to fund the repairs. LT's franchise agreement negotiations are still in process. New York State employer mandatory emergency plan. The town of Amenia, New York State emergency um, employer mandatory emergency plan has been completed before the April 1st deadline and is ready for approval. American Rescue Package. Supervisor Perotti attended the Association of Towns conference call with Senator Schumer on March 11th. The town of Amenia is projected to receive $480,000. This amount can only be used for COVID-19 costs, grants to eligible employers with essential workers, to cover revenue losses, or to make necessary investments in water, sewer, and broadband. The funds for towns with populations under 50,000 using the 2019 census to identify populations eligible for assistance will be sent to the states, which can hold the funds for 30 to 120 days, but are not allowed to add additional charges or requirements. Town of Amenia COVID-19. Amenia Town Hall will remain closed, but will be available to departments by appointment. Department extensions are posted on the front door. It's also a doorbell to the left of the front door. Each department is also available by phone, mail, email, and secure lockbox on the building to the left of the front door. Town board and other meetings will be held by Zoom. Public comments for town board meetings can be made by email or mail sent to the town clerk who will read them at the meeting. Public hearing meetings will be set up by video and telephonic Conferencing advertised with information about how to attend. Court administration has ordered that court in person appearances can resume. Vaccine information can be found on the front door, channel 22, and on the website. Sign up at www.duchessny.gov slash vaccine info form or call the Dutchess County Coronavirus Information Line at 845-486-3555. Select option one to hear the weekly vaccine allocation updates, then select option two to be connected to the Office of the Aging and added to the notification list. There is also vaccine being distributed by pharmacies and large medical groups. The town hall will be open to modified recreation activities with all COVID-19 protocols in place. In addition, the Recreation Commission and other committees will be able to meet in person as long as COVID-19 protocols are followed. Please continue to wear face coverings, be mindful of social distancing. Also remember to not touch your face, wash your hands often, use hand, and use hand sanitizer. Be well and stay safe. Town Clerk report. Good evening. I present the update of our tax collection as of today at 422 this uh, afternoon. Total taxes collected, $5,523,130.21. With our penalties collected to date, $2,827.34. That's a reflection of 80%, 86% of our taxes being collected and we have a remaining 201 parcels. So tax collection is moving right along. Uh, as I circulated around earlier this evening uh, for the town clerk report, 
Uh, in addition to our tax collection report, uh, I had circulated the audit from RBT, the annual audit for the tax collection and the justice court has been circulated to each of our board members and it reflects um, any <clears throat> comments, notations, discrepancies as found and you'll note in um, all three of the report there were no deficiencies or recommendations made for our departments. Has everybody had the opportunity to review those? Yes. Yes. Um, specifically, reason why I'm asking that and, and seeking the authorization of acceptance of those is because then once I get the email from the Office of Justice Court support asking us for our annual audit, then that gives me the authority to go ahead and just forward it with that. And then I also have to send them our minutes of this meeting showing that you've accepted that. So. I move that we accept the, uh, uh, the recommendations from our audit for the Justice Department and the town, uh, uh, town tax collector. Tax collector. Tax collector. Thank you. Which hat, right? <laughs> Second. Supervisor Perotti. Yes. Council members Doyle. Yes. Gutierrez. Yes. Morris. Yes. Samoji. Yes. Thank you. Also part of our packet this evening. Um, and I did circulate it immediately upon request, uh, receipt just after one o'clock today. We did receive another parking um, comment. Uh, downtown parking has been um, it, it very challenging. Difficult. Yeah, it's very challenging to say the least. I know getting in and out of the post office is difficult. There's a restaurant uh, deli right next door. You have the attorney's office. And then if you go the other way, you have Thusons is in there. And in that same building, they're coming in with a, a salon. Then you have the bookstore. So right in that, that very uh, small area, parking has been um, complicated. And I know this is the second time that it's being brought to our attention. And after having the opportunity to speak to this individual, um, she was able to describe the cars, and um, it is reason to believe that those are the employees of individuals in, in, those, in those entities. Um, there are signs in that area that says two-hour parking. It is a state highway. Um, so I bring that to your attention. Uh, you know, she had recommended maybe 30-minute parking. We don't have the other parking spot because now we have the library being built and constructed. So I do bring it to all of the board members. Um, the fact that now I've received two parking complaints within a month's time frame for the exact same area. It, I don't know if this is warranted for a conversation or how you guys want to proceed. Uh, do you want someone to go talk to the employees there? Um, and just maybe I already asked our chief constable to look into the minivan that seemed to be one of the uh, was pretty much parked there all day long in a okay. two hour parking area. Okay. Um, and then I, uh, I asked him to um, look into that because okay. our, our constables do have the authority to issue parking tickets if need be. But, okay. you know, we could, we could um, start with a warning and then go from there. I just wanted everybody to know, and, and as I always tell everyone, please, you know, send me your comments. I'll be sure to send them with the board. So immediately upon receiving, I forwarded it to the board. And I do like to um, let, you know, have these conversations in open form. So that way they know that the board is taking um, their comments seriously and having action on them. So thank you for that. And thanks for the follow up on the last one. Um, regarding our ADA sidewalk bid opening on the 11th, Myself and Highway Superintendent Megan Chamberlain, we sat out front here on a warm summer day and we conducted the bid opening. And as I've circulated that afternoon to the town board, uh, Crawford, as well as our town attorney, we did receive multiple bids for this project. Um, would you like me to read them into the record aloud? Okay, so we received a bid from TJR excavating contractors in the amount of $49,750. Land V Scape Inc. Nikki Diggs excavation, $37,925. Land Works excavating, $31,236. 
Woodland Manor LLC, $45,034.73. Champion Maintenance Contractors, $16,966.75. Linda Holding Corp, DBA Maggio and Sons, $59,750. Con Tech Construction Technologies, Inc., $30,000. So if um, everyone can review those and then. Um... Actually, the uh, Crawford, the uh, engineering company is the one actually doing the review okay. and going through each of the bids to see if um, there are any problems with any of the bids and um, they will be giving us a report about their findings. So, um, but for the record, since they were, we opened them outside and we they're not, I didn't open them here at the table in front of everyone. Um, I do tell everybody that uh, I'm just gonna announce them. So that way if they, when they wanna see the formal bid opening, if they were here, this is what they would see in here. Acknowledging receipt, all of those. Um, also circulated in our packet, we did receive one volunteer application. The application is for a committee that doesn't quite yet exist. But we did receive Stacy Mantle's volunteer application to be on a uh, new committee called Broadband. You know yeah, that. I already I already spoke with her and I explained to her that according to our committee rules that we need at least three people for a committee. Okay. So I know she had spoken to me about wanting to, um, you know, initiate that particular committee. But I, you know, I told her that she needed to find a few more volunteers to be on it before we could um, actually create that particular committee. So she's aware of that. I think it's a great idea and I'm, you know, I applaud her initiative. And if there's anybody out there, although there's not a, a new legal notice or something being published in our, our local uh, newspaper, do please feel free to reach out to either town clerk at aminianny.gov or visit our website at Amenia. Um, ny.gov and you can go to our quick links and then you can select forms and you can download our volunteer application and you are able to just simply mail it to me or drop it off in the black box attached to the exterior of the building. I, I think it might be helpful for folks to know what the purpose of that committee might be if it were founded that way they could know if they want to volunteer. Would you like to go ahead and further explain? Well, they were just there. Uh, I think she wanted to um, do a similar committee to the one that Pine Plains has to um, look into broadband for pure, uh, rural areas and see what opportunities there are. I don't have a description, Damien, because it doesn't exist yet. So once you guys create that, then we can, we'll add it. But thank you. I want to encourage everybody just to volunteer, but we can't just create it. Um, also, this is usually the time of night that I like to go ahead and acknowledge the reports that the board has uh, received by email, has been circulated. Uh, we do have our SEBI Environmental Services uh, monthly report for February, to reporting our total gallons used being 1,357,200 gallons uh, with customer calls not applicable. He does indicate in here in the, <coughs> the water line marks dig outs for safe New York, the areas to which he had to um, use that service. And he does indicate the emergency response repairs and his other assignments that he's completed for that month. Also acknowledging receipts for the record and for all of our board members that our February balance sheet, our February operating statements were all sent directly to all of us via our bookkeeper. And I present to the board this evening the abstract in a grand total amount of $316,609.11 and broken down as follows. General Fund A, $92,117.12. Highway Fund, $27,905.26. Amenia Lighting, $1,590.57. 
plus eight lighting, $585.22. Amina water, $19,030.61. Trail to the train, $175,380.33. Again, for our abstract totaling for the month of March, $316,609.11. And at this time, I'm seeking um, authorization for the supervisor to pay claims. I'll make a motion that we authorize the payment of $316,609.11 as, uh, as reported. I second it. Supervisor Perotti. Yes. Council members Doyle. Yes. Gutierrez. Yes. Morris. Yes. Samoji. Yes. Okay. And try to end a fun report. Uh, as we all know, the Easter Bunny is uh, getting ready to hop into town. <laughs> so save the date. April 3rd. And I don't know if I went too close in. So if you can see it, April 3rd. Beekman Park, 10 a.m. sharp. Easter Bunny will be doing her annual visit to Amelia. And then the following weekend, Saturday, April 10th, Amelia Fire Company will be hosting uh, their uh, chicken barbecue. And for those lucky, lucky folks that were able to purchase their tickets as, as soon as we began advertising, uh, I'd like to wish good luck to the Wasake Firehouse as they're holding their uh, annual corned beef and cabbage this upcoming Saturday, March 27th. Yep. And with that said, this concludes the town clerk's report. And Victoria, you're going to be starting with resolution number 22 this evening. So before we, um, we do the resolution, um, I would like to announce the bids that we, the engineering bids that we received for the route, um, CBG Route 44 project. Um, MJ Engineering and Land Survey PC, $37,400. HVEA Engineers, $59,988.54. The Chazen Companies, $30,343. Crawford and Associates Engineering and Land Surveying, PC, $32,000. Sarka Left Engineering, PLLC, $34,000. Barton and Longis, $19,921. DMB Engineers and Architects, $64,670. Provident Design Engineering, $62,550, and McLaren Engineering Group, $87,255. Uh, Victoria, I made a little matrix with some sort of qualitative notes. Do you mind if I share my screen? Not at all. Wait a minute, let me allow you And Ian, that. I have some questions for you as well, because there was a, there were a few things that didn't seem apples to apples in some of these responses. Um, there weren't. <laughs> I went through them too. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Let me see if I can share here. Uh, all right. So I don't know if this is too big or too small or whatnot, but one of the things I tried to do to understand the numbers that they put forth. The first off, this. Barton and how do you pronounce that? Logan. The GODC, I think, or GODC. The GODC. Um, this was the low bid, and they put a really nice package together. <clears throat> uh, However, it was incomplete. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I noticed that too, and it's it was suspiciously low, right? But the the other thing I tried to do is I tried to look at some of the some of the folks did a really good job of um, breaking out the number of hours that they estimated each of the 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 employee types would need to work and i took the the rate of the the you know employee typically it was an engineer junior engineer um, that would bill the most hours against the project and i tried to uh, use that as a, a metric for a sign um, and then the other thing i looked at was if they had a um, 
traffic uh, engineer, uh, public traffic engineer on staff or on the proposed team. Um, uh, and then just other sort of qualitative, but, but one of the big things Ian I noticed is that some of the folks went out of their way to say that construction inspection costs were not included. Bartons um, weren't included either. Right. And, and Ian, I'm wondering, was that a part of the bid or was it optional? It's part of the bid. It's part of the overall bid for, for the project. They have to have everything included um, for the cost of the project. They just can't, like Barton on the very last page at the bottom said, this doesn't include construction inspection. Right. There were a number of folks that, that made that caveat. What, what were you going to say? So if, there's, if, if, if any of these don't comply with the bid, specs as they were set forth then they can be disqualified you can dismiss those bids if if you so choose um the bid instructions clearly indicate that the town board has uh the right to do so and they also have the right to um to uh accept any bid so they can overlook minor um uh discrepancies we'll say in in any of the bids whether there's something significant in in there um then that would be grounds to have it dismissed all right well that's helpful so victoria just really quickly i'll sum up my reaction so uh i really i thought mj's uh proposal was nice uh and good and it was thoughtful they they put a detailed description into our particular project they obviously went to the site and took photos um, but it, it did not include the construction inspection, as we talked about. Uh, HVEA, uh, their price was very high, um, and, and I found their overall response was a little light on detail that was specific to our project. Um, I was very impressed with Chazen companies. Not only was the pricing good, but the team that they proposed was actually very senior. And even though the engineer rate is high, it's it, looked, it sounds like they would they would um, assign a very senior level uh, person to this project who would be able to help us out and get the job done, uh, you know. They're with, very experienced too. They have a yeah. good. They, they had a really nice response. Uh, McLaren was super expensive. Um, uh, I also liked Sarka Leff's response. Uh, she's, uh, or she, she runs a firm out of Pauling. They're a WBE. Uh, it did include seven weeks of construction oversight, and she included a lot of maps that she marked up, which uh, showed her work, sort of like showed how she came to her estimate and understanding of the project scope, which I thought was a really nice touch. Uh, DNB was very expensive. Crawford had a challenging situation with COVID, and they couldn't put a compliant response together, but obviously we have a long history of working with Crawford and Associates. Um, Barton, I think we already talked about uh very slick very good looking package uh but uh um certain things that you know didn't meet the bid spec and then provident was pretty expensive yeah they they kind of glossed over the seeker uh paperwork that needed to be done they just said well it you know it it just they just kind of you know where some of the other ones they explained that you know they'd be doing eaf and um, doing the paperwork for negative or, you know, or positive um, environmental impact. I mean, they just kind of said, well, it looks like it's unlisted. No. And they really didn't say anything about the actual paperwork they would be doing like, like Chazen did and Crawford did. So, you know, there was just um, things left out that would be a cost to the town eventually that weren't spelled out in there. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, overall, I wanna congratulate you and Don Marie on just running a really kick butt process here with this RFP, because we got a lot of high quality responses. Um, uh, this is the most I've ever seen for a project uh, here in the media. It yeah, was awesome. Actually, Mike Haggerty put the RFP together for us. 
It's great. So let's, you know, whatever we did this time around, we did it right. So let's try to replicate that uh, for future projects. It was, it was very well done. Thank you. Um, and I, so I also signed us up for um, BidNet during COVID, said that towns could sign up for free. So I signed us up So for BidNet. So we were, this um, RFP went out to six, uh, I think it was 64 women and minority and, dis and disabled and veteran owned um, businesses. And out of the 64, four responded with bids. And that meets the uh, guideline for the CDBG grant. That's great. Can you remind me, this is not being paid for by the CDBG grant or is there an allowance? It is. We have $150,000. Of which we have to construct the sidewalk and pay out the engineering. Right. So I'll, I'll shut up and uh, we'll get opinions here from the others. But I think from my scoring, my number one uh, would be Chazen and my number two would be Sarka Leff. Yeah, I like, I, I, yeah, I scored Chazen one too because they had such a complete package and just covered everything that would um, that would be an expense for the project, yeah. including the environmental review and construction um, inspection cost. I don't think it covers inspection, construction inspection. Um, Chazen I'm, does. Well, I see some construction uh, costs, but I don't see inspection absolutely specified in their proposal. It was like $1,000. It didn't sound like enough. Well, under their task six, it has construction administration services, and it talks about... Um, They've got nine hours. Construction. Nine yeah. hours doesn't sound like enough, but um, I, I don't know. All I know is the rail trail cost a lot of money in construction inspection. And what we don't want is something built that doesn't work. Well, this is a sidewalk, not oh, a trail a with a, with a um, bridge okay. on it. No. The title held construction inspector. I mean, they're listing this guy. If they are include, oh, I'm looking at Crawford. I'm sorry. Um, if Chasen is absolutely covering construction inspection, then I would go with them also. So if you look on page, uh, yeah, there are no page numbers. Under task six in their book in section two, uh, here's what it says for construction administration services. Chazen will provide the following construction administration services. Review contractors, shop drawings, and submittals for the material and equipment to be incorporated into the project for conformance with contract documents. Number two is review and monitor the contractor's construction schedule for compliance with the stipulated contract terms. And number three is review and process change orders and provide the town with recommendations on the validity of the change orders. So what I'm concerned about uh, for the project for conformance with contract. Okay, so I, I guess bullet point one, review the shop drawings and submittals for the material and equipment to be incorporated into the project for conformance with contract. I, hope, I want them to be on site and checking this stuff. And if that is what that says, then I'm happy with Chazen doing the work. I mean, that's a good company and I think it's uh, it's a good, it, I, I would be comfortable with that. I'll go along with that. Yeah, Vicki, I don't. They don't specify that they're on site anywhere, but they specify that they're going to monitor the schedule. It doesn't. It also doesn't specify that they won't come on site. It just says that they're estimating nine hours of this sort of construction oversight. 
That's um, why I'm leery about construction inspection versus construction oversight. We had that same thing happen on Mechanic Street, and they never did come out and actually see what on the ground was happening that day. He said, oh, no, we don't need to do that. Um, that was a group down on in Pauling. Um, not happy with that because the, the bricks weren't laid correctly. There's still a pile of bricks that aren't really adhered together. It makes a difference to have somebody on site making sure that it's built the way it's supposed to be built, not just overseeing the paperwork and making sure um, the plans and everything is purchased the way it's supposed to be purchased. Um, maybe I'm belaboring it, but I it would I would do the caveat that somebody's actually on site when the major you know doing a site visit at at, at critical times. Yeah, I mean, I think it would depend on how it was presented in the request for proposals. I, I don't know. Construction, the... construction inspection seems like it's very clear to me, but I, I'm not an engineer. We seem to have lost Michelle. So don't you're having know. Crawford Associates look over. Um, our uh, our contractors, but uh, is there a reason why John Andrews didn't uh, submit a a proposal for us? I the RFP was sent out. I guess he just maybe chose not to too busy or just couldn't yeah. do it. I mean, you know, it was sent out and av properly advertised. I'd feel better if he took a look at it, and I don't think it would cost a fortune for him to take a look at Damien's. Well, we, you know. we can't do that, Vicki. We have nine bids, and we need to pick one or not pick any. You can't go back out after. No, I'll make a motion that we hire Chazen companies, accept their uh, bid of, what was it, 32000 30343 $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, um, we have a resolution, a resolution to do that, Vicki. Oh, okay. The one you want. Right. Okay. And just, just for the record, we did lose Michelle on TV land, but she is here uh, on my phone. Uh, okay. So she can hear this entire conversation, and when she speaks, you you guys can hear each other. Okay. Yeah, I'm here, George. Yes. They know. They know. I told them that you're here, Michelle. You can hear Michelle. <laughs> okay. How's Michelle? <laughs> Michelle's here. Michelle. Feel about chasing. Michelle, yes. the board would like to know, are you okay with them going ahead with Chazen who submitted um, a bid in for the uh, sidewalk going on Route 20, uh, 44? It's going from where it left off to the Beekman Park. Are you good with that? Uh, yes, they met all of the guidelines that we had set out. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, that is correct. So they're going to go ahead and read the resolution now, just so you know, that's, that's, they're going to read it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And it was resolution number Dawn. 22. 22. Resolution awarding contract for engineering services for the town of Amenia route 44 sidewalk extension to Beekman park, whereas the town of Amenia applied for and received a grant from the Community Development Block Grant Program and the amount of $150,000 for the sidewalk extension along Route 44 from downtown Amenia to Beekman Park. Whereas the Town Board of the Town of Amenia authorized a formal solicitation of requests for proposals for engineering services from qualified professional engineering firms to provide the design and formulation of construction plans, specifications, and cost estimates assist with secret review, provide construction support and associate, associated contract administration and inspection services as required by the CDBG. Whereas requests for proposals for engineering services were duly published and the following proposals were received. McLaren Engineering Group PC, $87,255, DMB Engineers and Architects, D. PC, $64,670. Provident Design Engineering, PLLC, 
$62,550. Crawford and Associates Engineering and Land Surveying, PC, $32,000. Barton and, is it Law Duties, DPC, $19,921. Sarka Left Engineering, PLLC, $34,280. Hudson Valley Engineering Associates, PC, DBA, HVEA Engineers, $59,988.54. MJ Engineering and Land Surveying, PC, $37,400. Chase and Engineering, Land Surveying, Landscape Architecture and Geology Company, DPC, $30,343. Whereas the Town Board of the Town of Mena has reviewed the proposals and determined that Chase and Engineering, Land Surveying, Landscape Architecture and Geology Company, DPC, submitted the, uh, the lowest responsible bid and recommends that Chazen Engineering, Land Surveying, Landscape Architecture, and Geology Company, DPC, be awarded the contract for engineering services in the amount of $30,343. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, one, the recitation set forth above were incorporated in this resolution as if early set forth, fully set forth and adopted herein, two, the Town Board the Town of Amenia hereby awards the contract for engineering services for the above reference project to Chase and Engineering Land Surveying, Landscape Architecture and Geology Company, DPC, to provide the design and formulation of construction plans, specifications, and cost estimates, assist with seeker review, provide construction support, and associated contract administration and inspection services as necessary. Three, the Town Board of the Town of Amenia hereby author authorizes and directs the use of the Community Development Block Grant funds to pay for said engineering costs. For the Town Board, the Town of Amenia hereby authorizes the supervisor to execute the contract documents for such services after review by the attorney to the town and confirmation that all necessary documentation has been provided as required by the request for proposals. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we accept it. Second. Supervisor Prody. Yes. Council Persons Doyle. Yes. Gutierrez. Damien. Damien. Yes. Okay. Morris? Yes. Samoji? Yes. Okay, resolution number 23. Resolution adopting Town of Amenia Public Employer Health Emergency Plan. Whereas on September 7, 2020, the governor signed Senate Bill Section 8617B into law requiring public employers to develop health emergency plans for the protection of employees and contractors, whereas the town of Amenia fully supports the health and safety of our employees and contractors, whereas the town of Amenia developed a public employer health emergency plan collaboratively with several officials of the town of Amenia, whereas the plan supports con continu continuity <laughs> of operations for the town of Amenia, Whereas the plan has been developed to meet the requirements set forth in the aforementioned law, whereas the supervisor provided a draft of the plan to UPS UPSEU, UPSU, the collective bargaining unit for the Town of Amenia Highway Department, providing them the opportunity to review and comment on the plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the recitation set forth are incorporated in the resolution as fully set forth and adopted herein, that the Town Board of the Town of Amenia hereby approves and adopts the Public Employer Health Emergency Plan for the Town of Amenia in substantially the same form as the next here too. And three, the Town Board of the Town of Amenia authorized the Town Supervisor to sign the plan, putting it into full force and effect in accordance with the law and the provisions identified in the plan. Is there a motion? 
I make the motion we accept that. Second. Discussion? Yes. Uh, Victoria, I just want to thank you again for your quick trigger finger <laughs> to uh, get us this plan put together for free. Did it end up being fully free at the end of the day with this consultant? Yes. There was no cost, the consultant. Amazing. Really great job. Thank you so much. No further discussion. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Council Persons Doyle? Yes. Gutierrez? Yes. Morris? Yes. Emoji? Yes. Okay, um, now that we um, finalize and ratify the plan, there's um, also uh, final steps. One is to publish and post the final version of the plan in a clear and conspicuous location. Dawn, could that be your bulletin board? Absolutely. And in the employee handbook, so I'll have to send um, it to the person who did our employee handbook. And then the plan must also be posted to your jurisdiction's website or to the internet accessible by employees. This must be done by April 1st, 2021. And I'll make sure that uh, there's a link put on the website so that we fully comply with, with the plan. And um, the next thing is a discussion regarding amendment to the sidewalk law. Um, we need to um, decide if we want to um, update our current law because we would, um, Ian, I think we have to do a local law for the side to update the sidewalk law. Yeah, she would have to do a local law to amend the current local law. If that's something the town board uh, wishes to do based on uh, uh, the memo I had done and then the research that um, that Jim had provided, um, I can certainly proceed. And that, that's, an update, that's an update to our zoning code? Yeah, it's, um, oh, it's section 113, I think, off the top of my head. I could be wrong on that, but yes. Uh, yeah, 101-13. 101-16, oh. I think it is. Right, 101-16. I knew there's a 13 involved somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we should do it because of the potential liability of the, of the town, the way things stand. Um, just seems like a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Does someone want to make a motion authorizing Ian to start the local law process? I make that motion. motion. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll start. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Jim. You're welcome. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Council Persons Doyle? Yes. Gutierrez? Yes. Morris? Yes. Samoji? Yes. Okay, discussion about use source energy advisor community solar contract. Um, Jim, you went through the contract. Do you want to let us know yeah, what you want? Yeah, you know, I, I have a, a, a lot of problems with the contract. Um, I won't go through all of them, but uh, I'll go through the ones that I think are the, are the most important. Um, the The RFP process is, is performed for the project. Unisort or USource will first request bids from providers pre-selected solely by USource. If the client wants to ask for a bid from one or more providers, not pre-selected by USource, client as soon as reasonably practical during the selection process shall furnish the USource basic information about each provider and information including financial information reasonably requested by you source with respect to client selection criteria for such providers. When it says providers selected by client may bid in response to the process, but may not receive high scoring or a recommendation by you source. Well, that's, that's interesting. Uh, that's not the most important problem, but 
the problem that I have is with the indemnification. It provides for the client, meaning the town, to indemnify news source and all of its companies and affiliates, successes and assigns, et cetera, in whole or in part for any injuries, damages, including court costs and, estate and attorney's fees arising out of or relating to bodily injury, property damage, or personal injury of a news source employee or provider while at client's project site or offices caused in whole or in part by the negligence of client and or its agents, et cetera. Then it says that provider work, is with respect to provider work, clients shall protect, protect, defend, identify, and hold harmless new source entities from and against all claims, demands, liabilities, et cetera, including court costs and attorney's fees arising out of or relating to the activities of clients, employees, or a provider or sub providers <laughs> of the client's project site or any development, financing, engineering, procurement, et cetera. By way of illustration only, these claims, demands, causes of action, or damages include, without limitation, those that arise out of or are connected with defective and or inadequate work or design of any work performed by the provider or a sub provider. So we're identifying these people for everything in the world. And it doesn't make any sense to me. They should be indemnifying us. There's no there's, there's no mutual indemnification provisions at all. Right. Yeah, Jim, I, I agree with you. I don't know that much about contracts, but I do know a contract has to have a, both parties have to receive uh, the benefit of a contract. And it sounds as though the town will not be receiving any benefit to this contract. It sounds like it's all one sided in their favor. And, and I, I, I don't like the way that sounds. This this contract is wholly in, in their favor. There's a limitation of liability that that should be limited to actual damage of the parties, except for the profits that that use source is expected by the client's performance of its obligation. So they would be able to recover their profits as well. There's, right. a, there's a uh, there's no guarantee that. The representation or representation that the town will experience any savings or reduce its its energy consumption with respect to any services, and it says that all of, all of the uh, all of the decisions that are made are, are made by the town without regard to anything that has been said to them by you source. It has they waive all all kinds of there are all kinds of dis disclaimers and rep all representations, warranties, and guarantees. Can I, can I just interject real fast? Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Uh, sorry, I have a strange internet connection here tonight. <clears throat> but, um, you know, <clears throat> we have not uh, negotiated this contract at all, right? This is their first pass. No, we haven't, but I'm, I'm telling you right now that in its present form, there's no way we should sign it. Oh, for sure, for yeah. sure. I'm just, I'm just noting that, you know, typically... Isn't that their standard contract? It is their standard contract. But you know, you were, you were concerned, Victoria, about their uh, uh, people giving them references. New source has the right in its sole discretion to assign or delegate all or any part of this agreement or its rights, duties, or obligations under this agreement to any other person or entity, whether or not an affiliate of new source without the consent of the client. So. Any re re any references you got would be useless anyway, because they could they could assign it to whoever they want with impunity. And of course, the, the town doesn't have the same right. They'd have to be, we would have to get their written consent. So, in, in a nutshell, I mean, it's yeah. There there are a whole lot of other things too that bother me, but there's no way we should ever sign a contract like this. Right. Uh, I agree. I don't think we think we should give it any consideration because it doesn't sound like an upright, uh, honest company. When everything is just slanted towards them and we don't have any say or recourse to anything, and then we can be the ones responsible for any liabilities and, and being sued for this or that or the other three things. No. Uh, I, don't, I don't like it, and uh, I don't even think we should give it any further consideration. 
okay. I mean, let's set aside the particulars here. And Vicky, I don't want to steal your thunder here. I know this is this is uh, you know your your initiative here, but um, I think ultimately the goal is forgetting about you source for one second. Uh, our state, uh, New York State, more, more specifically NYSERDA, which is the, what does NYSERDA stand for? Anybody? New York, New York state. state Research Energy Development Energy. Corporation. I, it's a government, quasi-government organization. What they do is they, they sort of are the policy uh, enacting uh, arm of New York State's uh, green energy goals. They you know, monitor the solar incentives and the geothermal incentives and all that fun stuff. They're they're running a heat pump program, uh, incentive program right now. So anyways, NYSERDA is <clears throat> out there encouraging both uh, private homeowners uh, and businesses and municipalities to look into community solar Uh, Don't forget now that their their fee is is built into the provider's fee, so it's not like they're not charging us anything. We're we're paying for their. I think yeah. we're not getting them for free. We are yeah. not paying anything. Can I just explain that? So the um, NYSERDA put together this program to encourage private entities, people, individuals like myself or municipalities, in the case of Amenia, that kind of, uh, or corporations, to invest in, help the state of New York invest in solar projects. We understand, with the understanding, if, if you go on their website, it's very easy. Just, just um, Google community um, solar. And it explains it very nicely. It basically, it, it, it recognizes that many of us live in homes or have properties that aren't appropriate for solar, but there are other places that do have solar. To encourage these projects to come to fruition, New York State is subsidizing them. And they encourage us to uh, jump on the bandwagon and purchase our energy, not our uh, transmission or any of those other fees that in our case, NYSERDA provides, but to sign uh, up with um, projects such as I'm signed up with Blue Wave, but um, there are many companies to choose from, groups or projects that have been built elsewhere. And uh, people like myself say, I want to buy into that. And New York State promises that 10% off will be charged uh, on your on your electricity bill, the purchase of electricity. You're not actually purchasing electricity from the solar project. You are supporting it like a shareholder. You are helping to invest. And as a reward, New York State says, we're going to make sure you get 10% less. So it's uh, built into the um, the project, let's say it's Blue Wave, who's providing me with energy at 10% less, they, if I had used a consultant, it's not available to individuals, but for municipalities to sign a contract, they realize there's some uh, extra layers of uh, legality that needs to be done, and they their fee is embedded in the uh, project, uh, the solar project. Thank you. Let's just let me interrupt you for a second. I'm not opposed to solar energy. I'm just saying that this particular contract in yeah. its present form is not acceptable. That's right. all I'm saying. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to hear right. the benefits of solar energy. I, I agree with it. So it's, it's this contract that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the contract right. at all. Okay. Well, you had the question and others had said, we're going to pay for it because it's, it's in the, the uh, solar projects fees it does not come out of our pocket new york state is absorbing it or the project is absorbing it but it's not added on to our 10 percent off savings so it's worth three thousand dollars to us but if you're telling me that illegally we are um putting ourselves uh, all they are doing is helping us do an rfp 
for a solar project that's not even actually providing us with physically anything. It's just like a, a, a purchasing a stock. So I don't see where we need to worry about indemnification. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so I, I can't, I, I don't see anybody slipping and falling or anything by signing or, or issuing an RFP. It's, it, it, it doesn't worry me, but I may be missing something. Um, uh, I've, been, I've been doing this for a long time, and believe me, people do have injuries in connection with projects. Anytime you have people on site, and they, they do something wrong, or they, or they um, omit to do something that they should do. People can get hurt. Property damage can can happen. You know, I've seen it happen all the time. That's why these provisions are in there. Okay. Well, I, I, I think if, if we're interested in the solar, I think you've done a lot of research on it. There must be other uh, businesses that could we could get information from and consider. Perhaps they would be best. Better for us, uh, you know. Well, I was considering asking the Association of Towns legal advice. Have they known, or do they, uh, you know, purport to? You know, there are uh, representatives from NYSERDA and Climate Smart. Um, you know, free consulting, and I can I can look more into it. I I'm not a lawyer, so I didn't see this as a big uh, hiccup, but if it is, it is, and we'll see what other towns or uh, association of towns has to offer. If, if I might just add, my when I heard the presentation that they uh, put on, they had, they had discussed very briefly, just a very short blurb on their RFP process, mm -hmm. and it drew a red flag for me. Um, and, and Jim, that was the first thing you had pointed out. Um, so the RFP process is, is a little curious because it's, 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 they're doing their own RFP, but just to their crew. And I, I'm not sure of that. It would pass legal muster. Uh, so if, if you are, uh, exploring that, uh, ask that question, um, uh, about the RFP process. And if we have more, I haven't seen the contract, I don't know, but if there are more details about their RFP process, that would be something that, that I think we should vet out um, uh, in, in, in the investigation. Okay. I, it may be that we can conduct our own RFP. We don't actually, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll get uh, somebody from NYSERDA to explain the community uh, solar program for municipalities and what they recommend a municipality can do without incurring any liability or uh, charges or anything like that. Okay, then you'll come back to us with what you found the next yeah. meeting. It's okay. Um, I think I'll let, to other matters, I'll let uh, Megan in at this point. Um, Megan, are you there? I thought she was on. Hi, Megan, are you on? Yes, I'm okay. here. Okay. You want to explain the problem you ran into? Okay. Um, so when we did the bids in 2020, 2021 for sweeping, uh, Easy Street was the only bidder, um, and I've been trying to get a hold of them to schedule uh, a date for sweeping. Uh, they finally called me back. Uh, it's like a week, week, week and a half, and they told me that they um, are selling the business and they will not be sweeping for us. Um, so, and there was no other bidder. So at this point, I guess we have to find somebody else. Uh, I did get uh, three price quotes. I called a couple other towns, uh, see who they recommended and who they used, and that's how I came up with these uh, three names. You want to go ahead and go over the bids or the quotes okay. you got? Yep. Uh, the first one was 3D. Uh, they were $149 an hour, $75 each way. Uh, and they they came to one thousand three hundred forty two dollars a day. The second one was custom street services. Uh, they are one hundred fifty dollars an hour. 
uh, and their bid a day is $1,200 a day. And the third one was East Coast Industrial Services of $125 an hour with a $50 move per day. Uh, and their bid was $1,050 a day. Um, so let's recommend we go with East Coast Industrial Services at $1,050 a day. Um, and I did get on their schedule just so we were on it um, for the week of April t uh, 12th. Sounds good. A motion that we... And this motion we accept that the bid that uh, uh, Peggy just suggested to us. East Coast Industrial Services at 1050 yes. a day. Yes. I second. Supervisor Prodi? Yes. Councilpersons Doyle? Vicky? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I just I, I know I have Michelle right here, so it's kind of like I have to look up and toggle over. Um, uh, Doyle. Then we have Gutierrez. Yes. Morris. So I Jim. think we lost Jim. You lose Jim. Well, he didn't call me. Um, so um, I'm going to go to Samoji. Yes. I have Jim absent until he calls one of us. Hey, um, uh, are, do any of the surrounding towns have a sweeper? Not that I know of. I, it just seems like a shared services opportunity. If we're all, all of our, you know, proximate towns are paying for sweepers. Yeah, but the only problem is this time of year is everyone wants it at the same time and God only knows how many people get into it is when will we, when will we actually have it? Uh, there is a lot of maintenance to these sweepers. Uh, I actually talked to, um, Dover the other day and he had mentioned it and that's what he said too. Um, you know, there's a lot of maintenance to them. Um, and they're, they're expensive and we don't use it enough to, um, really be cost effective man when i was a kid i thought the sweeper truck was the absolute coolest truck <laughs> and i would drive that thing if we had one you would teach me megan yeah. sure. I, <laughs> I gotta learn myself and <laughs> megan doesn't want to drive it either <laughs> yeah. it's a dusty job that's for sure well, all right thank you megan for taking that initiative to uh, get those those uh, quotes for us and being on top of the, you know, the maintenance of the town, I greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you, Megan. Um, Megan, can I ask you one question? Sure. sure. Um, I'm sorry to do this right now, but it, every time I drive by Beekman Park, I forget to um, ask you to, if you got, if you guys in your free time or if you have a moment, you could swing by Beekman Park. Last year, I dug out the um, flowers in the wooden barrels. There were two at either end of the entrance to Beekman Park, and the flowers are gone, and I, can, I took away what I could, but there's one dead wooden barrel that needs to go, and I consolidated on one side of Beekman Park. If you could just swing by and pick it up and, and dispose of it, that would be great. I guess she's gone. No, she's no, nope. no, nope, she's here. She's just listening. <laughs> oh, okay. So I will yeah, have but... another another one as well down at Borden Park, uh, but I haven't quite emptied those uh, dead barrels out of the perennials that are in there. Okay. No problem. We'll grab it. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you, Megan. You're welcome. Bye bye. Okay. Hey, other also other under other matters is a transfer of funds resolution number 24 transfer of funds for March number two 2021 
Whereas budget amendment in the highway fund increasing expense line 17104.03, administration contractual by $1,507.50, decreasing expense line 51104.03, general repair CE by $1,507.50 for collective bargaining legal expense. Whereas budget amendment in the water fund increasing expense line 83202.06, Sal, uh, source power pump equipment by $3,824.70, decreasing expense line 83404.06, transmission distribution CE by $3,824.70 for equipment. And I make that motion. Thank you. Supervisor Prody. Yes. Council Persons Doyle. Yes. Gutierrez. Yes. Morris. He's absent, I'm sorry. And Samoji. Yes. Yeah. Um, then I, I've sent you um, some emails from that we've been receiving about um, uh, Little League joining a charter. It, in, Ian, you want to explain this? So the the emails it, it it's a little confusing as to what's going on in the emails. Um, Agreed. But what it what it looks like is that Little League uh, International is looking for somebody in Amenia to. Uh, become a chartered member of little league so so you have you have little league international you'll have someone who charters it and then that person who is who is on their charter that organization will then have some sort of agreement generally some service agreement with the town because the town has the, has the facilities the fields that these people will run the program a little league program for um for, for the town and there's there's terms and, and conditions to those agreements that's generally how i've seen this done what's happening here is there's this taconic little league which i don't know what that is or what it consists of but but whenever they drew their boundaries it appears that some of their boundary may or may not include some aspect of the town of amenia it does little league, yeah we're, we're in it them. we're in it is it is it the entire town? I mean, do have we seen them? I don't know what the boundaries are. I know, so so we're obviously in it to some degree because they are saying that Little League needs to let us out or let that part of the border out, so so there could be someone who could apply to the charter. So um, I told uh, the supervisor uh, today that I, I'll I'll reach out and I'll call some of these individuals and try to get some clarification as to what's happening who's driving this who's how this came about i don't know this came, i know who it came about um i think um, um our recreation supervisors uh, working with the commission and they wanted to be able to i guess play more teams and be part of an actual little league league or charter um and uh but our current insurance doesn't cover the insurance that needs to be covered if you're in this charter, which um, she got estimates for comes to a little over a thousand dollars. But when you, when I start asking questions about what does it mean that the Connick Little League give up territory of Amenia, um, apparently we're already in a legal league in a little league charter which is the Taconic Little League. And it looks like for some reason, um, they look like they want to set up a separate charter with just Amenia in it, which is, as Ian said, is very complicated. There actually has to be several people in the charter to kind of, what, what are the things they have to oversee, Ian? There were several. So the, when I've seen these, they, they, there's maintenance of the fields, they run the programs, they run concessions, they, um, there's certain... Um, no, but the group itself, who is, the, who is in the charter group? 
It's usually what, parents or coaches or who? Yes, uh, coaches, parents, coaches, they, they run the program and they, they, they'll organize in a group or an organization that becomes a, a chartered member of Little League. And then they'll put it on. They set schedules, the timing, um, and, and, they, and then that's who the town would have their service agreement with. Because essentially the town is, is going to say, hey, you guys are going to run this program for the town. Town oversees it. Town board approves everything. Um, and, and, and then, like I said, there's all sorts of terms and conditions that are built into them. But from these emails, what I've gotten out of it is there is no Armenia charter currently set up to take the place of the Taconic Little League charter. Why, why do we want to secede from the Taconic Little League League? I have no idea. No idea. It's one, it's like my first question when, when I call is to try to find out what, where, where, where is this being driven from? I, that, that's why it's. I mean, I know they, there. I know they, um, you know, they want to be a little league that can, you know, <coughs> play different towns. And then after they play towns, there's usually like a championship game and, you know, it's a little bit more involved, but it sounds to me that there isn't any, there isn't any group who would be the actual charter that has to be several people. Right. And they have to kind of run the whole thing. So, but it sounds like we're part of a league already. So yeah, we're all part of the they... little league. Already. So are they not getting all those things that they want? Are they not getting part of like league play and, are they, I don't know that Taconic is actually, you know, we used to have our own league, Little League, but we, I don't know that Taconic is, is hosting this year. I mean, what if it doesn't get off the ground? I think that's the issue. We're already in it, Vicki. We're, yeah, but is it active? It's, we're physically in their league, but we had the guy come to our recreation meeting and he said that um, there's no reason why Taconic couldn't have, you know, the boundaries include us. And we, if we're able to field a whole team with Weebatuck kids that are from Amenia and uh, Millerton that go to the Weebatuck school district, that we couldn't uh, have our own as well. I, I think the problem was, is whether or not Taconic is active or not. But the point is, who's going to run this thing? I mean, if it's a charter... Um, and like any other charter there is, you know, there's, there's usually a group of people who want to, you know, have the charter, take possession of it, do all the things that are expected. And I just, but I don't, I don't see, I don't know who would be doing all that. Whoever I'm sets not... the baseball programs now. I, I, I don't know. I mean, they had him come to their recreation commission. I didn't hear any feeling that there wasn't the uh, the capability to, to pull, pull this off, but we haven't done it in, in years, I suppose. So maybe, uh, you know, our new rec supervisor isn't, uh, you know, interested in it, but I don't know why they would have had him come and give a presentation no, she's the one driving the whole thing. Then she would That's be. That's who I've been getting the emails from. So what we, what we would have to do in order for them to move forward with this is approve the additional expenditure of the insurance, which isn't included in our insurance. It's actually the insurance you would get through Little League. And in the, you know, what I sent you, it comes to between the accident insurance and all the other the liability and everything else it's one thousand forty two dollars generally how that would be set up is that the chartered group whoever the whoever gets the charter that organization would get the charter from literally they'd be a chartered member they would obtain that insurance and then the town would be listed as an additional insured on that service agreement with that um chartered organization that's how i've seen that done um what what i don't know is is they're talking about dismantling or coming out of this deconic i don't know what the goal is of that so until we know what the goal is it's going to be hard the to goal is to for amenia to have their own little league 
but why? I mean, what's the? Uh, can can we table this until we can hear from the rec uh, director or the commission? Well, Vicky, you were there. What what was discussed? <coughs> So I was there when the a little league guy was there telling us what it would take to create our own in Amenia, and I did not hear, uh, you know, the impression that I got, and I agree with Damien, is we need to hear directly from our uh, Kelly um, Milano why we don't just go with a Taconic. It's a bigger bigger uh, geographic region that includes our kids but there was the feeling i guess that we thought we could uh generate a lot of energy and enthusiasm right here in amenia and that we would be able to field our own team but we're not positive the concern was you know do we have enough kids or not and if they don't have enough kids they would have the opportunity to go back into the Taconic region, but I don't know that Taconic is actually active. You know, we have to make a decision in a short amount of time. I think we're up against a deadline, right? Right. I mean, so the way the insurance, <laughs> works, so, that, so the town doesn't have to, um, I'm trying to understand the insurance. So who would have the insurance in, in the, the charter would? Is that how that works? And then the town would be, the town would just be listed as, as additional insured instead of the town getting the insurance? Okay, yeah, because it sounds the way, the way they're setting this up, it sounds like the, the town of Amenia itself is going to become the chartered member, which that, that doesn't seem, that's not how I've seen it. I think that what we oh, need is right. additional insurance that our insurance, Byron said our, our normal insurance won't cover the actual kids on the field, right? We, all, we, we cover property issues, but not the people. And that was the hole that we need to fill with our own insurance. Yeah, that's what Byron, that's why Byron said to get an estimate from Little League itself which we have here, in addition to the accident insurance. But I guess I just want to be clear on who's who's getting the insurance. Is the town of Amenia going to hold the insurance? Based on the emails that I've seen, I, I can't, I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. I can't, I can't decipher what's going on. These emails, why they're trying to, to do what they're doing, what's the goal they're trying to accomplish by, by the suggestions that are being they're, made. They're trying to set up an Amenia Little League. I understand charter. that. Why? If you don't know why they're doing it, there, there, there could be many, re there could be many reasons. They want, why. they want to be able to play other teams. It was in the email string, you know, like. LaGrangeville, and I don't know who else they had in there. Yeah, there's Little League things. that, um, and, and I always remember when we did have Little League active is that it did cost an extra $1,000. I do remember. And they have to have special umps. It is an expensive thing, and it's for kids within a certain time frame. I wish I knew more about baseball, but it was something that was a higher level of, of um, achievement for these kids. I have it's Kelly true. Milano who called in on my cell phone. Did, is this a, tonight? Did you guys want to speak to her? Or do you want to sure. have the table? Okay, Kelly, go ahead. They can hear you. Hi, how are you? Um, the, I'm trying to get into the little league. Um, the the current league that we're in, actually, I don't even know if they're going to have a league, and it's actually not as many kids anymore. Um, we play uh, Dover, Pine Plains, um, Millerton, and then a couple teams in Connecticut. The, it's just gotten smaller. Dover is actually part of this little league that I'm trying to get into. Um, yes, we can go with Taconic, but our costs in Amenia are a lot lower. Um, Dover is part of what little league? Are they their, They have their own charter? Taconic, Taconic has their own charter. They're, they have I know, but what did you said Dover is in something. Dover has their own little league also. So they have their own charter. Yes. Yes. Um, the Taconic has already said that they would release our area, Amenia, um, 
they only get one or two Avenia kids anyway. But if uh, this is, it's a better league for our kids to be in. You know, it's an actual league now. Um, like I said, I've tried to reach out to our other league, and I don't even think that's going to happen. So if we don't try to get into something else, we might not even be able to have baseball at all this year. Because uh, these teams over here um, in Dutchess County, is they're all Little League. And we used to have Little League in the town of Amina. I'm not sure what happened. Um, it was actually called Mid-County. Um, <laughs> That was years ago. I'm just, like I said, I don't know what happened. Uh, but I've talked to a couple coaches that have been with us for a long time, like DJ Riley, and he is encouraging this. John Lamb is encouraging this. Um, it is, it, it would be all the kids that we would be playing in against in high school anyway. Poughkeepsie, um, East Fishkill, LaGrange, um, Taconic is multiple towns so it's just it's a better league for our kids to to be participating in so who would be overseeing all the things that are required uh uh myself and my husband chris milano uh because he runs baseball right now the umpires we set our games with the the other teams and for the umpires, the Fred Cantor, who is overseas district 17, little league would actually go out and get the umpires for us. Uh, we do have a cost for the umpires, which we had to pay the umpires anyway in our other league. We always paid umpires. Um, so to make this happen, you just do we just need to approve the additional insurance i believe so and i can get on the phone with fred um tomorrow and i saw there were um some paperwork to be signed i assume i'd have to sign that right i would fill all that out and um but you can't sign so, anything right right um and i would i would fill all that out and get it to you uh, you know, for all the proper signatures and approvals and, and make sure everything gets gets set. Where are all these games played? Um, they played on town property? It would be it's the, like, all on town property. But for multiple towns or just our town? And No, we would travel. It would be our town for the home games. Yeah. And then... Um, there, there's different, you know, every, like, East Fishkill, I'm not exactly sure where they play, but it's East Fishkill Rec. Um, you know, Poughkeepsie, Taconic, Taconic has a few locations because they're in, multi, they have multiple towns. And and is, is this exclusive for Amenia residents? It would be Amenia, Wasayak, and anybody that goes to Weebatuck, since Weebatuck is in the town of Amenia. So we could have Millerton kids. So that would be your boundary then? Right. Which would make up the town of Amenia, Little League, or whatever it's going to be called. Yes. So in order for us to move forward with this, we just need to approve the expenditure of the additional insurance through Little League, the accident insurance and whatever this other is. That's that's the biggest thing right now, yes. Shouldn't should they get in touch with the those the, the, the that we're in now and, and get them to come down and speak to us in the town board? And let us know what our options are. We already know what our options are. Okay. It's either to start the little start Amenia Little League or not. Yeah. And and the running of this. Go ahead, Ian. Are there any monies exchanged? Is anyone is is there any payment for the running of the the Amenia Little League, or is that all just being volunteer services? How how is that being done? All our coaches are volunteer. 
there's a there's a small fee, the ten dollar fee per team, but you had the same you had a two hundred dollar fee for um, to be in the other league that we were in a few years ago, which as of right now I do not even think that they're doing. Um, the last time I talked to the lady that was in charge of that, she didn't know, and I think she might be stepping down. Um, who schedules all the games? Who schedules the fields? Who schedules? How is that all being done? Uh, you schedule the. You talk to the other, um, the ones that are in charge of the other little leagues, and you figure out what when you can have games. It's just the same as the other league that we were in. Um, the the lady that was in that ran that league made up the schedule and if you had any changes you went to her and say i need this home game i can't play this night but we make up our our field and then ultimately i would tell okay monarchs what's your schedule so that we can coordinate who's on the field which we usually do anyway yes and then also i have an email out to the the athletic director at we to see if they're using our fields for our conversation, uh, mine and Victoria's conversation the other night, because we- I haven't them. received anything from them. Right, I, I sent an email, he's supposed to get back to me tomorrow. And then I, you know, for our discussion, if they are gonna use it, you know, we all need to know, you need to know, and um, they need to provide all their clay and they have to line their own fields. Yes, they certainly do. Who does that? We have to, if they use our fields. They have to use their own clay and they have to line their fields for their games. Yep. What about just the Little League game? If it isn't We the Talk, if it's just a Little League game, who's providing the equipment? We, we have we have we have that ourselves. Okay. You know, our, 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 our maintenance residual? we have a recreation maintenance person who does that. Okay. It is it isn't any different if we weren't in Little League. We'd still be having games. No, but Little League is a private organization that's running an operation on town property. And that's inherently the issue that I'm trying to figure out because there, there needs to be agreements as to how that is, is being handled. I don't know how that was done or it was done in the past, but I, I, I haven't. I just saw these emails recently. I haven't had a chance to investigate any of it. So I don't I don't know the, the, the current legality of where it is. If there is an agreement, there might be one. I don't know if there isn't one. Agreement with who? It's our own Little League. Yeah, but Little League is a, is a private organization that's that this sounds like Taconic Little League is part of. And that sounds to me like that's the program that's being run on our fields, but I don't, I don't know that. No, they aren't. Deconic Little League has never been involved that I know of. I don't even know who's in it. I mean, we basically, what we've been doing every year is like Kelly mentioned, we, you know, we play all the teams from all the local towns including a couple of towns from Connecticut. I mean, that's what we've done for years. Right, and like, I know Pine Plains, they don't even have like the nine through 12 age group, you have to play in Taconic. Where in the past we've played mm -hmm. Tacon, uh, we've played Pine Plains for the age group nine to 12. Dover, they're in um, that same uh, little league, um, they Do they have Dover. their own little league group, Dover? Dover? Dover does, yes. So that's what you want to do, pretty much the same thing? Does Amenia have their own? Yep, yep, it'll be Amenia plus anybody that goes to Weep Top. I think it would behoove the town board to, to discuss with Dover uh, what exactly is the setup over there before they... Um, well, it it's a, would be the same setup. We're working with you know, and the head of the Little League guy. And, and I can't verify if what they're doing is even legally accurate or not. But I just, I caution it because I don't know, have all the facts. So I'm, I'm, I caution it. Uh, I am thoroughly confused as to what we're 
proposing to enter into agreement with what organization and what we're proposing to leave. And I'm sorry, maybe if I'm being dense, but I'm super confused. So uh, I heard on this tonight that Dover is both, they have their own league, but they're also part of Taconic. No, um, no. Dover's not part of Taconic at all. Okay. It can't be, Dover can't be part of Taconic because they have their own little league. Dover has their little league. Taconic has their little league. Got it. And I think what they're trying to do is have Amenia have their own little league. Yes. And so the people that would need to have this insurance and operate this Amenia little league, this these this would be these would be town affiliated people or private citizens or I'm I'm confused about that that part as well. Well, the insurance is for the well, that was going to be my next games, question, I think. Victoria. But my first question was, who is the who is the Amenia Little League as it's being considered? You're right there, Damien. Well, uh, there is no Amenia Little League. I, I okay. You mean, but, you mean I, a, the uh, little league that they want? Okay, other than being affiliated with the little league organization, is the town going to hold the charter, or is it private citizens that will hold the charter? And if it's private citizens, then why is the town paying the insurance? Correct. We would want to ask the town to hold the charter. What? What? I think we need more, dis more discussion on this and, and figure out, like you say, who, what, where, and when. We don't really know. Kelly, um, who would hold the charter? I would think the town of Amenia would hold the charter because it would be Amenia based. But we don't know that for certain, right? I think what we need to know is um, what holding a charter means and what you know what responsibilities go with it. Exactly, exactly right, Victoria. Was that discussed, Vicky, when you were there? Or? That that was not discussed. Um, I could have, like I said, I could have Fred Cantor. Um, cause he's, he's the one that runs district 17, uh, answer any of those questions. Um, and I could get him, you know, I could talk to him tomorrow. Okay. I think what we need clarity is, um, these, uh, little league, um, seems, to, uh, has to, um, belong to a charter. So I think we need to know what the responsibilities of the charter and who would be the charter and how would be, you know, how the insurance would work. Because okay. it's because it's kind of sounding like the town of Amenia would be the would hold the charter and you know we um, we really need to know if there is a charter. You know, and if there are uh, members in it, we need to know what their responsibilities are. Okay. <coughs> okay, so can we table this until we have more info, please? Uh, I agree, Jen, and we need to table it. So, Ian, do you want to talk to Fred Cantor and get some clarity? Or I I would I would like to talk to 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 Fred and and find out exactly what what the proposals are what they're looking to do I would I would like to get to the bottom of that to me I think okay. we need more information so it would be very helpful in the discussion at this point okay yes I, I agree with that uh, Ian okay Ian I'll get you all uh, his contact information so that um, we can get this all settled. I, I actually have it. 
I have it in one of the emails here. So thank you. Thank you. And I can, uh, and uh, I believe I have your email as well. So I can keep everybody in the loop. Okay. Are there any other town board comments? Hang up. Thank you, Doc. You're welcome. Bye. I've got some if, uh, if you're ready for that. Yep, we're ready. So, uh, we uh, were had a BREC meeting on 311 2011. There were no quorums, so there's no minutes. Um, we had a housing board meeting on um, March 9th, and um, we went over uh, uh, various things. Um, we have a housing survey postcard that went out to 2,200 uh, households. Anybody with a 12592 or 12501 uh, or the Dover 112, what I can't remember what that one is, but the Dover Plains um, address. So those went out. We have 100, uh, 165 more or less uh, responses so far. So we're getting very interesting comments, in my opinion. But um, it sounds like Damien knows more about uh, analyzing the results of a survey. And I know we have help from Hudson River Housing and we'll have help from the Tritown Coalition trying to interpret this, the uh, survey results. If you haven't yet um, filled out your survey, we wanna hear from everybody. Uh, if you don't, or if you do have um, housing insecurity, we still want to hear from you. I don't know if you can see the, the flyer, but the deadline is April 2nd. So you have two more weeks to get your survey done. And we truly, truly appreciate all um, all opinions. And if you can elaborate, if you particularly think that the answer to affordable housing in Amenia is not building housing, but putting in a sewer system in our downtowns, or that you think that a sidewalk to Fresh Town would make it more affordable for people to uh, live um, live and work in Amenia, please let us know if the rail trail is important or if the train is important and, and you think that uh, wherever we put, uh, we want to put affordable housing that it's, um, those locations might be important to you, you need to specify that. Or if you think it should just be anywhere in town, that should be specified. But uh, please hey, use your Can own. I... Sorry, Vicki, I just wanted to show where they could click to get to the survey. Okay. Can I do that real fast? So yeah, please. Yeah, it's very easy to do online. I already did one. So yeah, right here on the town website, I hope you guys can see my screen, but up here at the top yeah. it says click here for the housing survey and then you click there. And then you get the survey the questions. that pops up. And it should take about five or six minutes to complete. It's pretty short. All right. So um, we discussed a lot more than that, but that's our major push right now is to make sure all of the businesses who have workers who may have um, uh, workers who have <coughs> finding uh, housing in this area. We want to make sure that they get online and, and give us their feedback. Uh, we're going out to agricultural workers. They have their own uh, reality issues with housing, a uh, long history of, of making it affordable for um, farm workers to be able to live close by. Um, lots of different places. So we're, we're trying to get it out as widely as possible. Um, I did it. Uh, let's see our next meeting just so we know is the net is the, they're on the second tuesdays of each month at 5 30 p.m and our next one would be april 13th um the cac prepared a report for the town board members and hopefully you got cc don marie if you didn't i'll make sure you were um they held a meeting uh, last night via zoom and we're going to meet next time at the town hall in the auditorium if that's in fact available mm -hmm. from now on at least through 2021 we'll be meeting in person because we have difficulty 
doing uh, Zoom meetings that meet open meetings laws and all of that. It's complicated. It's hard enough for us to even get together at all. So um, we're going to meet in person following the um, social distancing and masking requirements by CDC and the town halls policies. We're looking forward to um, having a CAC roundtable. We participate every year, and this will be on March 30th with all the Dutchess County uh, CACs, and we share what projects are being worked on in each town. It's very interesting. We only have five minutes, so it's it's speed, speed um, reports. Um, Climate smart, nothing really is happening because we're um, we're stuck right now, not getting an answer yet back from Mike Haggerty as to whether or not we got an extension, a grant extension for our road stream crossing analysis and climate resiliency planning assessment. That was supposed to have been um, done, but we needed an extension because of COVID, but we have not heard from Mike Haggerty. I'm not sure what to do other than try and get us. I asked for his contact at DEC so I could contact them. Victoria, do you want to follow up? Or I can email you what I emailed Mike and then see if you can forward that on and see if you can get a dead, uh, an answer for us. Well, you can call him. Uh, I think he moved to the West Coast. Does he still have the same? He has the same number. Okay. He has okay. the same telephone number. I think he's working full time, right? So I'll have to do it in the evenings or such. Um, well, you can, yeah, you, know, you could call him. He works mostly from home. I mean, okay. he's, he's been doing things for, for us okay. Back right now. He's going to be, um, um, getting the balance of our grant money from DOT. Okay. We, um, sent, in, uh, we sent in everything for the $10,000 we're due from CDBG. So we're just waiting for that to come in. Okay, so uh, I will call him. We then discussed uh, the activity at 549 Old Route 22, and they passed unanimously um, a recommendation that the town enforce its laws regarding composting and solid waste management with respect to this property, including a thorough investigation to determine whether the current business is operating in accordance with local laws. Um, Community Solar, they uh, unanimously passed a recommendation that the town move forward with this initiative and create an RFP, RFP to evaluate our options. Um, they were able to, um, they would like to continue their tradition of sponsoring an annual town cleanup day after I had said at our last meeting that I didn't think that we, I wanted to do it because of COVID uh, precautions, but they felt that it can be done safely outdoors. Um, we usually we, do it around Earth Day, don't we? Yeah, they're, they're recommending that we do it on Saturday, April 24th. And I have put a request into um, uh, to, um, our Welsh sanitation. They have a transfer station and if we can pick up the items for free and uh, take them that day by one o'clock before they close, uh, then then I would I would go forward with it if the rest of the town board thought it was a good idea. Is there yes. any other town board comment? If not, I would like to. Um... Uh, I do have one really quick. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I know everyone is tired of talking about coronavirus. I know. I I am very tired of talking about coronavirus. Uh, we are not doing so well in Dutchess County <clears throat> uh, this week. And I know a lot of people are getting vaccinated. Uh, that is fantastic. Uh, we are doing way, way worse than we were doing over the summer. Uh, we are going in the wrong direction, whereas the rest of the country, most of the country is sort of going the opposite direction, going down. Um, I would implore you guys uh, out there to please continue to try and take this seriously just for a little bit while longer <clears throat> and uh, try to stay safe. 
um, because we're almost out of the woods, hopefully, but but not just yet. And and things are not looking so great in our county. So uh, if you could do your best to adhere to CDC protocols and be considerate, uh, it would be much appreciated. Hey, I just That's wanted to um, say that the town of Amenia has a cybersecurity policy. Um, we've had a few phishing incidents. Um, all of the committees are required to use their AmeniaNY.gov email. And in order to protect the town. So if you're using personal email to send town of Amenia information or any information about the committees, stop. And if you have, if you need to get um, access to your town of Amenia email at AmeniaNY.gov, contact Annette, my secretary, and she'll help you get access. Is there any other town board comment? Well, someone's going to have to take Jim's place. I'll, I'll take Jim's place. I'll make the motion uh, that we can conclude this meeting and that we will have a happy and safe weekend and see you all soon. Uh, second. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Okay. Councilpersons Doyle? Yes. Gutierrez? Yes. Samoji? Yes. And Jim's already absent. <laughs> night, everybody. Good night. Be well and stay safe. Good night. Good night. Good night.